from somewhere inside that building right there that you saw. That's kind of <laughs> our house, our world, uh, Bank of America Stadium. Beautiful Bank of America Stadium. Stadium in the park, good bones, <laughs> classic American stadium. Uh, down in the basement of it is where uh, Studio A is, and that's where we are, and now that's where you are through the magic of TV. Thanks for joining us on Inside Panther Football. This man here, Johnny Fantasy, knows everything there is to know and more about the National Football League. We had a football game on Thursday night, uh, Colts and the Texans. Uh, Colts jumped out to a lead, looked like they were going to run away with it, and then what happened? And, and then the Texans kind of hung in. J.J. Watt scored another touchdown, yeah. which is kind of fun to watch. Um, yeah, the, the Colts... The running backs are still, fantasy-wise, both still productive. T.Y. Hilton, you know what? Before this season, people were sort of, there was some cautious optimism on T.Y. Hilton. Not only did he have that big game last night, nine catches, 223 yards, but coming into this week, he had been targeted more than any, all but four running back wide receivers, sorry, in the NFL. This is a guy, the rest of the way, I think he's a top 10 option. He's legit. And at the beginning of the year, as you mentioned, I mean, they added Akeem Nix, you got Reggie Wayne coming back, looking a little bit more healthy. But T.Y., I mean, he, he really, this was the game, wasn't it? This was a separator for him. This was a separator for him. And Reggie Wayne's more of a possession receiver now. Yeah. Hakeem Nix is a, is a third, you know, third receiver in that offense. They throw to Dwayne Allen, too. They throw to Fleener sometimes. They spread it around. But, yeah, T.Y., fantasy stud right now. That's it. And, Mick, real quick before we leave that game, also, um, Andre Johnson. For Houston, he's been kind of not doing that much this year, but he kind of looked at like the old Andre Johnson for Houston in that game. Yeah, last they night. didn't know if he was going to play. Yeah. And uh, DeAndre Hopkins has probably been a more productive receiver, uh, had been until last night. Andre had a nice game. It seems to always fall to me to ask you about the ever revolving door, the ever changing situation with Carolina Panther running backs. What's the latest this week, John? How many do we have now? Six, seven? There's a lot. <laughs> if if Jonathan me. Stewart plays. And we don't know that yet. He was limited in Thursday's practice. If he plays, he is the one you want to start. You want to ignore the others. Now, Stewart, he's probably a, a third running back option. I think I'll have him ranked about 30th if he's active. If he's not active, then we have confusion. We talked last week about Fozzie Whitaker. Fozzie turned out to be a break glass in case of emergency on the sideline while Reeves and Obaniah played. If Stewart doesn't play, we're not sure what's going to happen with the others. You're going to want to avoid them. Not full go Cam Newton as far as the running Cam Newton yet, but it's like they took off one layer of bubble wrap last yeah. week. So not quite there, and he doesn't quite look like the Cam that's going to run 50 yards yet. Uh, but getting closer, it looks like he's at least making progress for that now. He is getting closer. And the great thing about him, for, from a real-life standpoint, he's passing the ball a lot. He, he just looks like he's improved passing the ball. From a fantasy standpoint, this matchup is tough. I know the Bengals didn't look good last Sunday against the Patriots, but this is a pretty good defense. This game looks to me like a... 17, 14, 16, 13 kind of battle, especially with A.J. Green out. Uh, as far as Cam goes, he might play well. From a fantasy standpoint, you won't be looking at much. 225 and a score, something like that. We can't count on the running yet, so you're going to want to avoid him for fantasy purposes. Locally, Greg Olson and Kelvin Benjamin both look like really solid, dependable pass catchers and favorite targets of, of Cam Newton. How, do you, how does the fantasy world view these two athletes? Um, Greg Olson, like we say every week, he's a rock. Uh, funny thing is the Bengals have allowed more receptions and, touched and yards per game to tight ends than any team in the league so far. Greg Olson, you're always starting him. You're going to want to start him this week. Kelvin Benjamin, we saw last week again, there's going to be some ups and downs, but the production is probably going to be there more often than not. Fantasy owners are seeing Kelvin Benjamin as a guy who gets better all the time. Preseason, he was a backup. Now he's a starter. All right, so you guys touched upon the fact that A.J. Green is, it doesn't look like he'll play for Cincinnati with a toe injury aggravated in practice this week. So he's out. It's heartbreaking for people who draft him first, second round. Who are maybe some guys to look at for Cincinnati that might be picking up some fantasy stats because of that? Well, right now it looks like Brandon Tate and Mohamed Sanu are going to be the starting receivers. Sanu's the guy you want to look at if you're, if you're desperate, let's say, especially in those points per reception leagues. Sanu can catch the ball. He can throw the ball a little bit, too. Right. He, he actually has this, you know, every once True in a while, like, they yeah. let him throw it. Yeah, <laughs> Rutgers guy, so, yeah. yeah, I'm a fan. Oh, right, yeah. Right, but um, <laughs> Sanu, he could catch five or six balls this weekend. If you need a wide receiver, you're having trouble, you know, you've got a guy in a bye week, you had A.J. Green, you need to grab somebody, Sanu could be your guy. Gio Bernard, their running back, big splash when he first came out of UNC. Only about 5'9", low center of gravity, tough to get a good lick on him. What do you think about this guy? Uh, like him a lot. Uh, the fantasy world likes him a lot. He's a he's a top 10 guy this week. I think I've got him sixth at running back. Mm. He, he catches the ball. He runs it. He's explosive. And this week, he is really the only true weapon the Bengals are going to have on the field. We don't know how the game plan is going to change without A.J. Green, but you would think 
that they're going to get the ball to Gio Bernard as much as they can. Well, and then they drafted Jeremy Hill out of LSU, and uh, and here's a guy that I guess goal line maybe he would be poaching some of those touchdowns as a short situation because he's a bigger kind of running back. Sure, yeah, he's had some up and down games, but again, th this it, if Bernard's the best weapon, Hill is probably the second best weapon they have this week. You would think they're going to get him involved if they can. I think Hill could carry the ball 10 to 15 times if you're if you're digging deep for a running back. He's a guy you could start if he's on your bench right now. Got about a minute. Andy Dalton has, is 10 and 3 against the NFC. Been to the playoffs each of his three seasons, even though he's not yet won a playoff game. Uh, it's easy to to say, oh, he's not that good, or he's just got a good team around him. But uh, isn't the proof in the stats he's putting up, John? Yeah. Last year the stats were terrific. This year they've dropped off a bit. Probably more toward the average to slightly above average Andy Dalton. Um, I like him. I know part of his reputation is based on the playoff performance, which has not been good. Uh, the thing is with him for this week, A.J. Green gives him the potential to have breakout fantasy games. With no A.J. Green, there's probably not much chance of, AJ, uh, of Andy Dalton putting up big numbers. Mm -hmm. If I had him, he's a guy who you start sometimes based on the matchup. I'd be benching him if I could. Their offense is based a lot on misdirection, slick faking. He's a good ball handler, and he does freeze, do a great job of freezing pass rushers with some of his faking. So more about that, and uh, also more about fantasy football and the NFL when we continue next with Johnny Fantasy, along with Jim Zoki, along with John, this is Mick, and you're watching Inside Panther Football. Baseball oh card. God. You wish. God. Jeez. You wish. Talk about the Hannes Wagner card. It's, it's, my, yeah. it's my own fault. Nah. I'm the one that brought it <laughs> in. But that baseball, that card, by the way, is um, at card shops is worth a half a cent. Good because it's a mistake card, that's what adds value to it. Mm -hmm. Because I got my name wrong. eBay, we could get up a little higher, maybe. Maybe one cent. <laughs> uh, I have a lot of them at home, by the way, that I'll be glad to, <laughs> to offload. A stack of them. Do you Talk get gum with that? <laughs> the old pieces of gum? Yeah, the, the yeah, cardboard the piece gum of gum. in the world? Yeah, yes, that gum. I know yeah. the white, that, that white powder around yeah. it, too. I'm sure it was good for you, very good for you. <laughs> um, there was fluoride in it. All right, um, Johnny Fantasy, <laughs> our guest, talking fantasy football. And um, what about these uh, backup running backs? Uh, does the name Storm Johnson ring a bell? Storm. He's the guy who, if you missed out on the other guys this week, if you missed out on Brandon Oliver, you missed out on Ronnie Hillman or Andre Williams, Storm Johnson might still be available. Now, he's not going to be your fantasy superstar. Don't get overexcited. But the Jacksonville coaches, they liked what they saw last week. Got his first action. He's a rookie, by the way. He was Blake Bortles' teammate in college. Four carries, 27 yards. Sounds fine. All week. Wow, wasn't he impressive? Didn't he look great? They said now they want to get down to two backs carrying the ball. Last week they had four. Toby Gerhardt hasn't done much. Missed practice on Thursday. The, the beat writers that follow the Jaguars seem to think that Storm Johnson is going to get some action this week. If you are desperate, again, break glass in case of emergency for a running back, Storm Johnson's available in 98% of FoxSports.com leagues. He could be your guy if you really need somebody. We do this for a living. I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> you could be making up a name and we'd be going, oh, yeah, Storm Johnson, and I would believe that. I don't think he's a real player. Uh, Brandon Oliver, you've talked about in past weeks, though, John, and this guy is wearing Darren Sproles' old, old number in San Diego. Kind of looks like a kind of a puffed-up version of him, um, but uh, he plays. He plays well, and they go through running backs in San Diego like we do here yeah. in Carolina. So. He's the last man standing. Last yeah. week, Donald Brown went down with a concussion. Oliver basically was the last guy there. 182 yards and two scores. Every fantasy owner who started him, I started him in one league. It was great. Nice. Best moment of my year, probably. You listened to your own advice. I Very did good. finally listen to my own advice, <laughs> and it worked. Um, Brandon Oliver is not going, and again, he won't stick around forever as the main back. Ryan Matthews is going to be back in a few weeks. But Oliver, this week, he's probably the only real back they have, and they're playing against the Raiders. The Raiders have the 31st run defense in the league. If you picked up Brandon Oliver, roll with him this week in your fantasy game. Ronnie Hillman or C.J. Anderson? Ronnie Hillman's going to start. If you picked up Ronnie Hillman, Monty Ball's out with a groin injury. Ronnie Hillman should start for you. However, if I had Ronnie Hillman, I would probably start him. I would be lying if I said I wasn't nervous about C.J. Anderson vulturing some carries. So I think you just cross your fingers if you have Hillman, play him, and, and hope for the best. All right. This brings us now to my personal team because it's nice that John shares all this information with you guys to help you. I need help. <laughs> I've got four teams, and one of them is it's two and three, so it's not horrible. But I, I, I drafted first round Calvin Johnson, 
seemed like a good idea. Second round, Monty Ball. If, if you'll notice where it says reserves, that's where Monty Ball and Calvin Johnson are because they're injured. Injured superstars. I'm sorry for what I've done to ruin their careers. I took John's advice. If you go to all the way to the bottom, Travis Kelsey was playing very well for me, but he's on a bye week this week. Pierre Thomas, who's done nothing all year till last week when I sat him, is on a bye week this week. Those are the reserves. Now, I took your advice in advance of the show and drafted uh, or got off waivers Ronnie Hillman because Monte Ball is injured. But take a look at my lineup there, John, and just just help me. Just just fix it. What, what needs to be done with it? Well, I, I don't think there's much to fix. It looks pretty good. You okay. can't do anything about the injuries right. other than try to fill in for them. The one thing I'll say is next week you could be in a little trouble. If the C.J. Anderson vulturing on Ronnie Hillman comes to pass, right. then next week you'll be in a little trouble. What mm -hmm. I would do, you've got two quarterbacks there, Jay Cutler, Brian Hoyer. Cutler's buy isn't until week nine. Brian Hoyer, if you cut Brian Hoyer now, you have one quarterback. But if Cutler gets hurt, you have to pick one up. You'll probably be able to get Brian Hoyer again. <laughs> Nothing against Brian, Brian Hoyer. He's doing Hoyer. okay. Yeah. But there's enough bottom feeder quarterbacks that you could pick up. I would cut Hoyer, maybe pick up C.J. Anderson. Now you got three Bronco running backs. But for the next three weeks, you'll be covered. So collect the whole set All of Broncos them. running yes. backs. Okay. Right. I'll do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to listen to you. Okay. That's exactly the advice I was going to give you. I'm going to say the exact same thing. <laughs> and pick up a Mick Mixon or maybe a Mike Mixon. <laughs> What a jib. <laughs> um, so uh, how, how's the Twitter questions been running this week? We gotta go. We're doing all right. We got some yesterday that were all focused on Thursday night. And since it's Friday, they're no help. But we got a couple others. All right. Let's take a look. <laughs> Here is Twitter question number one for Johnny Fantasy. Hoyer. Oh, look, Hoyer. <laughs> Need a week six quarterback, Bortles, Bridgewater, or Hoyer? Okay. Bottom feeders. There are no good options here. But There's, there's got to be other players if, out there. If you have to pick one. Hoyer's probably your guy. So far, you know, the Steeler defense, not that great. Hoyer's averaging 254 passing a game. He's got six touchdowns in four games. And the other guys, you know, Bridgewater might be okay against the Lions. Um, Bortles, they're playing the Titans. Not a bad matchup. But if I had to pick one, Hoyer's been pretty solid. I think I'd go with him. Okay, Twitter question number two for Johnny Fantasy is, <laughs> I need to start two of these. PPR is PPR. points per reception. What does that stand for? Points Tell per reception. It stands for paper. Don't worry McCoy, about it. McCoy, Forsett, <laughs> Points Carhart, or per Oliver. Okay. We, we mentioned Oliver. LaShawn McCoy owners, chill out. He's going to be fine. I know he hasn't been the guy you expected when you drafted first or second in your league, but he's going to be fine. He's going to turn it around. I think this is going to be a shootout with the Eagles and the Giants this Sunday night. So uh, if you have McCoy, you're not benching him. That's silly. Oliver's the second guy. I mean, Gerhardt, forget. Forsett's been pretty good. He's going to share carries with the two bigger backs on the Ravens, but he's got a pretty good matchup. He'll get the ball plenty against the Bucs, and he'll be solid. But Oliver, again, the Raiders have the 31st-ranked run defense in the league. Oliver is the last man standing there. He's going to get almost all the work. They picked up Ronnie Brown this week, I think. Yes, but who is 58 years old. Who is 58 years old, exactly. <laughs> but uh, Oliver's going to get almost all the work. If you have him, you have to start him. Okay, I have LaShawn McCoy as one of my first-round picks in one of my other leagues that is also doing very mediocre this year. Uh, just an alarming note was that with four minutes to go in their game, a close game, apparently he tapped out. <laughs> he didn't want to finish the game. I don't know if he was injured, tired, whatever it was. And, and Darren Sproles came in and finished the game for him. That concerns me in a close game that LaShawn McCoy was like saying, bench me for the time period. When he's That concerns me moving forward. That would concern me a little bit. I mean, it might be that whole, you know, it's a, it's a fast-paced offense. Maybe that's going to happen sometime. Ho hopefully it's a one-shot deal. You, you know, it would concern me, too, but try to put it out of your mind. If it happens again, then worry. Until then, it, it's okay. You're starting with Sean McCoy, everybody. You have to. All right. How many people play fantasy football? Um, 30, Are there any numbers on that? 30 million, something like that. It's, it's a lot. Why is it so popular? Uh, because it lets you be in charge. It gives you a different way to watch. I think for most people, it gives you a reason to watch Chargers Raiders on NFL Sunday Ticket. Why would anyone in Charlotte, North Carolina watch Chargers Raiders if they had Sunday ticket. But Sunday 4 o'clock, you have Brandon Oliver. Hey, now, I'm going to click over to that game, see how this guy's doing. I, I think it helps the NFL because it lets you, helps you watch the games you otherwise wouldn't have a rooting interest in. Appreciate what you do, brother. Thank you. Good. Good Thanks, job. guys. Johnny Fantasy on our show. Two more segments remaining. We have an interesting video piece, some of the players talking about the Bengals, and up next, Max Henson from Panthers.com. Stay tuned to Inside Panther Football.